Okay, so just a little quick talky talk about the next generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. So someone uh, sent me this uh, link that said that uh, Autoblog has finally spied a Jeep Grand Cherokee for the next generation. So finally, finally, after all this time of just waiting, there's going to be a new Jeep Grand Cherokee. So, um... Zach Palmer, uh, June 10th, 2019. He's the person who wrote this. And uh, so basically, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee is a coming. Now, I don't know what it's going to look like because obviously it's got all this ridiculous uh, body cladding and stuff on it. But from what I can tell, it looks like the proportions are very, very similar to what we have now. Now, I don't know about these mirrors. If these mirrors are production uh, shape that way. They kind of look exactly like what I got right now. I see this, uh, back spoiler right here, which is holding up this portion right here. Cause that's the back spoiler looks a lot like what we currently have. So for all I know, this is probably test equipment with the body of a current generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. And as you know, they have to test the interior features and they have to, you know, they have to do like a lot of thorough testing on these things. They're going to have to test these things throughout the winter to make sure that they perform the way they're supposed to perform and all that. And as for this hood thing right here, I really don't know what that's about. But um, for the most part, it really looks like the Jeep Grand Cherokee that they've got coming um, it's probably going to be a lot like what we actually have right now. So, you know, they have their spy photos and all of this stuff. It's like you really can't tell if anything has really changed. But what I do see is that it looks kind of like the front end has been extended a little bit. And um, other than that, I really just don't know what to expect. So um, I am really glad to finally see spy photos. Like, for instance, I'm waiting to see what the new Dodge Charger and the new Dodge Challenger are going to look like because it scares me to think that they may be moving these things to those shitty Italian platforms for fucking Alfa Romeo. Nobody wants that. Like, we want our cars big, large, fucking huge, and fast. We don't want any of that little shitty Italian car shit. Like, when you have you visited an Alfa Romeo? Have you actually gone to one of those places like the stelvio moves decently but the julia barely moves unless they're giving it away with leases and those old what is it the the 500 c's those things barely move it's like nobody's trying to get one of them little ass cars not unless you live in manhattan nobody's trying to buy that stuff so my thing is it's like you know i hope to god they don't fuck this up i know that what, what cars they got they're supposed to have what is this a grand commander what is this, 2018, they got the Grand Commander, Grand Commander Jeep, this is supposed to be a Jeep truck, E-Segment three-row, Grand Cherokee with the two-row. I don't know if it will happen, but it's very possible that the Jeep Grand Cherokee could get a third row. Because one of the things about Jeep is, um, for the most part, with the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee, the Jeep Grand Cherokee is very, very similar to the Dodge Durango. Uh, in uh, overall platform and overall body cladding and everything. The only thing different is obviously the, you know, the um, Durango has the third row. So my thinking is it's very possible that what Jeep may do is they may do what Lexus did with their uh, RX. And what they may do is they may make a three-row Jeep, which will basically be a Dodge Durango that looks like a Jeep, you know. And if they do that, I guess that would probably be a good idea because basically it's like they've killed Chrysler. They gave up on the Aspen. They haven't brought out anything new for Chrysler. I think they're killing off the 300. I really don't know what's going on with them. And um, because there's no Aspen, they absolutely need a new product, you know, so that when people go shopping at Jeep, because the, here's the thing, when you go shopping for Jeep. You're basically going shopping for Dodge too. When you walk into a Jeep dealership, you're seeing Dodges that are right there. So if you wanted a Dodge Durango or if you wanted one of the smaller Dodges like the Journey, all of that is cross shopping. Like you're cross shopping Jeep, you're cross shopping Dodge. It really doesn't even matter. The lines are blurred. But um, I'm really, really glad finally to see something. I mean, it's a, I've never gone this long well, between, what is this? 2012 till now it's like the only thing that broke up the monotony was the 2014 
uh, refresh of the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and then that god awful shitty Trackhawk where they basically closed their eyes and they were like, yeah, we'll just put a supercharger in there. We're not going to do anything to make the exterior look cool or anything. You know, we're, we're just going to make it look plain Jane because we're cheap or something. It's like, I don't know what they were thinking. I, I don't know how many people deserve to be fired for the track hawks failures. You know, uh, I, I just don't know. So I, I honestly don't know what they're doing. They've given up on Chrysler. They've only got the minivan, and basically that's it. I, I don't even think they really have the 300 anymore because they gave up on the 200 because the 200 was too small. And Jeep is basically their bread and butter. Dodge is also their bread and butter, but I believe Jeep outsells Dodge because you got these people running around buying all these Wranglers. And, you know, Grand Cherokee sell like roaches at this point, which I can totally understand because it's a great truck. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But um, this is it. This is it. The new Jeep Grand Cherokee. And that's the new Jeep Grand Cherokee. I'm so happy to see it. Hopefully, they'll uh, give it a couple of interior upgrades. Like, I'd, li I'd like to have heated, cooled massage seats. I'd like to have a couple of buttons on the doors in order so I can activate the heated and cooled seats and the massage without having to go through the touchscreen. Um, other than that, I really can't think of anything else because my... My Jeep Grand Cherokee, I have to say, may be the best car that I've ever owned. Like, normally, I've never owned a car for this many miles, over, what, 35,000 miles. I've never put this many miles on a car before. I usually flip cars and buy something else. But uh, I have to say, I've been so happy with the Jeep Grand Cherokee SRT that... Um, it's like, uh, I, I can't really think of anything else I want. It's just like, you watched all the videos where I took my friend and uh, we went shopping and she settled on the X-T5. You watched all those videos that I made. We went to Infinity. They had that shitty QX50. I, I would never buy that. It was garbage. They had the QX60. That was garbage too. Acura had a way better deal with the RDX and the MDX. I would have preferred the Acura over the Infinity. And Lexus, the RX, was way too expensive. They wanted like $60,000 for that level of equipment. And there was no way we were going to buy it uh, bare bones. That wasn't going to happen. And I was like, well, $60,000, that's, what, $10,000 over budget. Actually, I think it was like sixty four. I can't even remember now. But we drove everything, settled on the Cadillac XT5. I really think Cadillac has the best deal going right now when it comes to most of these small crossovers. But the uh, problem is until their XT6 is released and until Lincoln's Aviator is released as far as the American three-row crossover you know when it comes to like luxury ice internal combustion engine cars other other than the Tesla Model X it's like um you know GM pretty much has that on lockdown because they've got the Acadia and they've got the uh Traverse but um, I'm really happy to see Jeep finally bring out something. And if this turns out to be a two-row and a three-row possibility Jeep, that would be absolutely cool. So, um, finally, the new Jeep Grand Cherokee has been caught testing. I've been waiting for spy shots. Like, it, I, I tell you, I feel like so bored because it, it felt like there's like no new products right now it felt like there's like nothing substantially new there's nothing substantially exciting or cool coming out like lately and um the thing about it is it's like um it's really nice to see that the jeep grand cherokee is uh finally getting um a, a replacement because this model jeep grand cherokee has been out since what like 2012 and it got a refresh for 2014, which is basically what I'm driving. So most of the people that you see on the road here, they're driving around in either 2014s, 15s, or 16s. And of course, you obviously see some people with 17s and 18s, but you don't notice those as much as you notice the 16s and the 14s. Now, um, I've recently reached what is this 39,875 miles and uh, some of you are probably wondering well why is your tire pressure monitoring system light on well the reason why it is because right here my uh, tire pressure monitoring system when I, I was getting a, a flat tire fixed and the tire pressure monitor that was in that tire broke off 
And um, I don't know if that was because of maybe I hit a bump really bad or whatever. But um, the tire pressure monitor and my uh, front passenger tire broke. So I had to order another one. It'll be here probably within a day or two. And then all I have to do is just reinstall it. And these things, for the most part, are automatically detecting and they're automatically setting up themselves. So if you were to look at my um, tire pressure monitoring system, what you would see is that the front driver tire, um, the front driver tire one broke. Uh, where is it? So it's in here somewhere. Where is it? It's, you look for the pick, there it is. So basically, as you can see, all my other tires, the pressure is just fine, except for my front uh, right-hand side. So um, I'm going to get that uh, in the mail, and then I'm just going to have my uh, tire guy install it. This year, I replaced my rear tires, and uh, I plan on probably replacing my front tires, too. I think you get about... Um, you get a good amount of time out of these tires. I think you get about over 20,000 miles or something out of every set of tires. Um, but um, to tell you the truth, of all the cars that I've owned, this one has been the most trouble-free. I mean, I, as much as I loved my Chrysler 300, because of the fact it ran so low to the ground, it was like I, I had a lot of issues with it because I'd be hitting like bumps and stuff and sometimes I one time I hit a curb and I damaged the spindle and I had to replace that shit so the thing about it is the the Jeep there's a reason why so many people buy these things it's because they do everything it's like all year round you can use this car so whether or not you have a, a regular Grand Cherokee or SRT Grand Cherokee or even a Trackhawk you can use the thing all year round which is something I really can't say about the Hellcat. Hellcat, when it comes winter time, you gotta put that car up. There's a lot of people who, who take risks driving that car during the winter, but uh, it's just not worth it. It's not worth it to risk your life in a car like that. It's way too powerful. And um, me personally, I'm just waiting for the next generation of uh, stuff to come out. Now, as far as the new Jeep Grand Cherokee, I don't know how significantly better that's going to be than this truck. But um, I hope the cars are going to be really cool. And it would be nice to see a Elephant engine in the Jeep Grand Cherokee as well, as well as the Durango. Since, you know, we already know it's possible for them to do just about anything they do with the Durango with the Jeep. And in, in fact, almost more so because the Durango gives you a little bit more space. Um, like if you have like, you know, a lot of kids and you need that third row. There are a couple of things I would like to see. Like, for instance, um, the only way you can really access the heated steering wheel, the cooled seats, the heated seats, the only way you can really access that is by going through the touch screen. I see no reason why they can't put some buttons on the door. Like, even like right here, just like Mercedes does for the uh, heated cooled seats. Or, um put one button on the steering wheel somewhere for the heated steering wheel you know the steering wheel i don't want to have to go through the touch screen to get to the damn heated steering wheel button that doesn't make sense that's one of the problems that i have with tesla all the tesla's functions you have to go through that touch screen in order to get to those functions and i think for certain things that that really sucks it's like for instance if you want to adjust your steering wheel they don't have in the Model 3, they don't have the stalk on the side that allows you to adjust your steering wheel. So that means if your steering wheel is in a certain position, let's say you get into a car accident and the car catches on fire, if the battery is not functioning, then most of your equipment won't work because it won't have any power. So my thing is, what they really need to do is they need to have redundant system buttons for certain things that especially like these cabin amenities like I, I should not have to rely on a touch screen to move my goddamn steering wheel I should not have to rely on a touch screen to move features in my seat like for instance the headrest in the Tesla Model S I shouldn't have to use the touch screen to get to head seat functions that that should be something that's on the side of the chair like each individual chair should have that in the chair but uh you know it's like minor quibbles because to tell you the truth i mean this this the jeep grand cherokee is perfect like i think most people 
most people who are coming out of other cars who consider going to FCA for a product, I think a lot of them end up in Jeep Grand Cherokees because it just does everything they need. I mean, it, it has enough space for your family. It's got enough space for me to drive around comfortably in. And if it's got enough space for me, oh, look at that. Hellcat. Guy's got the red Challenger. But if it's got enough for me, then it must have enough for most other people in small families. It just has to. Like, I'm the, I'm the perfect test of space in one of these vehicles. You know, I can sit straight up. I can sit comfortably. I can drive comfortably. I got the heated, cooled seats to cool my ass. It's like I could drive this thing all summer and be just very, very comfortable. And, and that right there is what sells cars, you know. So I don't know what engines are going to come because I know they have, like, a new diesel engine that they're showing off. And they're talking about how much power it gets. And I think it's like... Um, it's like a two liter diesel that gets like 484 pounds of torque. That sounds cool. I'm pretty sure the Wrangler guys will appreciate something like that because they get high gas mileage because it's it's a diesel. The only downside is diesel fuel costs more. Here, diesel fuels at least 10 to 20 cents more here in New York than gasoline. And uh, right now, premium gas is like 320, and you know that's the highest I've seen it. But, um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, this truck is damn near perfect. I mean, it, it just does and has, like, everything you need. And, I mean, despite the fact it is a gas guzzler, and despite the fact, as you can see, I get 12 miles to a gallon right now, I mean, um, considering the amount of power this thing has and considering the amount of utility you get out of this thing, it's actually really worth it. No, it really is. You know, there's other smaller options like this uh, Stelvio and the Maserati Levante, and then Volvo's got a bunch of SUVs, and then you got the Kia Telluride and the Hyundai Palisade. It's like you've got a never ending assortment of SUVs and crossovers. But I have to say that for what it is, the Jeep Grand Cherokee just does everything. And oh, look at that. Look at that fucking Volvo. Look at that guy. That guy in the Toyota, he, he, he panicked, jinked back. Yeah, stupid Volvo. But, um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's basically just it. It's like, I'm really glad to finally see Spy Shots because we really need another generation of products. Because at this point, it's like, it's like I'm just bored. It's like I just want to see more stuff. I want new stuff. And I'm just tired of just seeing nothing but these stupid SUVs and crossovers. These things are boring. Anybody can make a crossover now. It's like you could be you could be many, and you could make a goddamn crossover. It's, it's boring. All you're doing is stretching the ceiling and putting bigger tires on. It's like that's it. You know, it's it's just not it's just not that exciting. You know, so um, I'm hoping to see more very soon. Autoblog already showed it off, but I'm hoping to see more very soon. Yeah, uh oh, it was like a cop right there. Yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we'll get another truly competitive, exciting product. I tell you, it's also amazing when you really think about it that um, they were able to give you so much technology in 2014. And then you look at all these other cars and the stuff that they got in them. And a lot of these other cars still just don't offer a lot of this stuff. Like, for instance, I, I think like having front uh, and rear bumper sensors along with the camera... It's just that, no, no, you're going to slow down, Mr. Subaru. Fuck you. So anyway, um, I think having front sensors with a camera is fabulous. You know, like, for instance, you, you got this ridiculous uh, little Honda Civic right here. Because, you know, I can't stand those things. And uh, let's say you get too close to them. You're in traffic, right? You get too close to this guy. So you get your front sensors going. And uh, just get a little too close to him. Look at this, look at this. And then you know that you're way too close to him. And if I get too close to him, it'll turn red. Look, look right up on his ass. Right up on him. Right up on him. There you go. So now I know. Okay, yeah. You see it's red? Stay away from that Honda Civic. You know? That's amazing. And it's like a lot of new cars. Like even if you go to Lincoln, you go to Cadillac, they charge you a lot of money for packages like that. Meanwhile, FCA figured out ways not to have to charge you top dollar for shit like that. 
The other thing I like so much is the automatic adaptive cruise control. Like, I can take my foot off and I can just push the resume button and the car will automatically go to um, resume 38 miles per hour because that's what I had it set to right behind this guy. And it won't uh, run into him and it'll slow to a stop when necessary. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn disable it and I want to get into this next lane because I want to make a right turn right here. And that beep that you hear, it means that there's probably somebody on my right or left side. A lot of cars have that now, the cross traffic system. A lot of cars have that cross traffic There's two ladies right here. She's like, yeah. Yeah, it's like I didn't mean to uh, jump in front of you, but uh, you're a Subaru, so th as far as I'm concerned, you ain't got no rights. So anyway, um, that Honda Civic right there, and then you got this Toyota Sienna right here. And um, basically, um, you know, when you have that adaptive cruise control, you can be in very, very tight quarters with other cars. And if you're on the highway, it really, really saves your leg. Like, you don't have to constantly be on the gas and the brakes you just don't have to be because all you got to do is just hit that button and then with some moderate watching and everything you can uh just uh, you know let the car basically drive itself now what the cars don't have is obviously automatic steering not because you know they're not teslas and everything but then again a lot of that the gimmicks and that haven't been worked out yet like a lot of those bugs they haven't been worked out but um the thing about it is if you're in like regular highway like if you're driving from like on an interstate and you're just getting in the middle lane and you're just letting the car drive having that adaptive cruise control can be a lifesaver because it means that now you know you don't have to be a hundred percent attentive you can actually you're not supposed to but you can do other things um and you know as long as you keep some attention towards the road like if you stay far enough behind the next guy you know, because it, it, it allows you to set the distance you want from the person. So, like, for instance, is this school bus, if I push uh, resume right here, it's going to set the distance based on this button right here or this button right here. And um, basically, it's going to hold that distance. It's going to hold that 23 miles per hour because he's doing 23 miles per hour. And it's going to maintain two or three car lengths in front of me. A lot of cars don't have stuff like that, you know. It's, a, it's actually amazing. Like, for instance, this car also, when you put this car into reverse, the mirrors automatically tilt down. You know, some cars have it, some cars don't. Even the luxury cars, some cars have it, some cars don't. Now, you hear that beep, that means that the system canceled itself because the last thing they want is for the car to stop and then you stop paying attention or go to sleep. And then next thing you know, the guy moves and then all of a sudden it starts going after him, you know. And I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm hoping and I'm pretty much certain that the next Jeep Grand Cherokee is going to have featured all of those features. You know, I'm pretty sure the, new, the next Jeep Grand Cherokee should pretty much have everything that this car has. And then they'll just, you know, upgrade it with uh, new stuff. Hopefully they'll do something like maybe massage seats. That would be nice. Um, I can't really, th honestly, it's like with the exception of the seats, like, with the exception of heated, cooled massage seats, I really can't think of anything else that they really need to put in the next one. Like, I know that they'll probably put new engines that'll have, uh, you know, slightly more um, economical fuel systems in them. But when it comes to the interior, it's like this has got to be the one car that I can say had a perfect balance of interior features and uh, luxury features. It, like, had the perfect, perfect balance. It's like any other car maker, you'd spend more. Like if you bought a Lincoln, you'd, you'd pay more for a Lincoln, even the small Lincoln, not a Navigator. You'd pay more for like, say, an MK, uh, X than you'd pay for like a Jeep Grand Cherokee Overland or a Summit with the equivalent features. And when it comes to SRT, if you buy this right here, this truck is only like 79000 plus a couple of thousand dollars worth of uh, taxes and uh, add-ons. Meanwhile, the Navigator's $100,000. I mean, I know it starts in the 80s, but, you know, the one people want is the one that's $100,000 with all the features in it. 
then there's the Escalade, which they have a new Escalade coming soon, because I saw some spy photos of that. You know that's going to be $100,000, because Cadillac, at this point, they feel that they can demand whatever they want now, because they've got the X-T5, the X-T6. So they're like, hey, guess what? If you can't afford the Escalade, just get an X-T6. You know, spend $60,000. But uh, I have to say, like, this, this car has, like, the perfect balance of stuff in it. And anybody who buys a Jeep Grand Cherokee or even a Durango SRT pretty much understands that um, for the money, there's, it's like if you bought a Jeep, oh, shit, that guy got his uh, muffler bashed in. Somebody hit his ears. Damn, that looks terrible. I couldn't drive my car looking like that. But, uh, oh, that's a Saturn, so I guess nothing of value was lost. So anyway, um, yeah, it's like anybody who buys like an FCA Jeep or they know that there's like nothing else that they could get that gives them what one of these cars gives them. And um, that's, ju that's just where it is. Now, when these new engines come out, like, I mean, for God's sakes, they got a thousand horsepower elephant coming soon. I mean, if they make the mistake of putting that shit into one of these cars, these cars are going to be death mode. These cars are going to be monsters, like death machines. Get this guy. Yeah, go ahead. Take on the fucking Mack truck. Like, it's like Terminator 2 and you John Connor. Yeah, go ahead. Take them on. Take them on. Go ahead. I'd love to see it. Sat Man, this Saturn driver is pretty aggressive. No wonder why you got your muffler bashed in. So aggressive. I know you're angry because you got a Saturn. If you took better care of it, it would look better. But, hey, y'all, back up. Back up. We got the V8 here. Get your horses up, little bitch. <laughs> God damn, I love this fucking car.